Hello, tonight, time travel, the most paradoxical of all the great enigmas. Some of the people sitting around this table have already travelled through time. Others plan to imminently. Tonight we will stare that can of worms in the face without frowning or turning our heads away and we will prove that it is possible to travel through time. <laughs> My name is Tony Bassett, I'm a practical engineer with an interest in making exotic devices. I've even made my own time travel machines. I'm Jenny Randalls and I investigate time anomalies. I believe that time travel may soon be practical, probably using energy waves rather like we send computer messages and faxes. I'm Bob Morris, I'm a hard science fiction fan and I love the paradoxes that time travel presents. I'm Andrew Eaton, I'm a scientist and a time travel wannabe. I am Cynthia Gisby and I have experience of time travel first hand. My name is Miles Johnson and I believe we have access to data gathering and time travel technology. Maybe I can start with you, Cynthia, because you actually did travel through time. So what happened? Uh, well, my friend and her husband and my husband, we were going down to Spain on holiday and it's, we were going to go all the way straight there. Then we decided that it was too much and we would spend the night in a hotel. And we pulled off this piage to a small little auberge that we were sent to. And, uh, sent by whom? Well, as you come along the motorway, you can see the red motel sign above the motorway. Mm -hmm. So we went down to get rooms there mm -hmm. and an old man with white hair and a plum colored suit sent us down this road and um, so you didn't end up at the motel that you'd originally intended to no go no, go to mm. no. okay anyway we we found this place all lit up and pulled in opposite and looked in through the window and uh, my husband said well i'll go in and ask so he went in and asked if there was rooms and they said yes they could put us up and could we have a meal yes so we went in took the cases and stood them in the hallway and went through into a room on the side of the bar and had a meal. Uh, my friend and I had egg and chips and uh, my husband and his friend had steak and chips. We had thick old bread um, that was sweetened and um, the pictures on the wall, we sat and laughed at those. Um, they they were, looked as though they were painted in 3D. They stood out. It was swans on a, on a lake. It was heavy old knives and forks and thick china plates. And what were the waitresses dressed like? There was no waitresses. There was the old lady that obviously must have owned the auberge. And she had a long gown to the floor with a big white apron over it. So the kind of clothing that could have been from now and could have been from yes, many yes, years yes. ago. We just thought it was rural France and, and had a laugh about it. Oh. And uh, she nodded and smiled and was very friendly and took our order and made us very comfortable. And then we went upstairs afterwards for the night. We had a great big brown furry rug over our bed and it was very, very high. When you sat on it, your feet didn't touch the ground. The door shut with a latch. Um, the windows, there was no glass in them. They were double shuttered. And uh, I said to Pauline, oh, is your, your, your room the same? Oh, yes, she said, it's very quaint. She said, I'm going to put a chair under my door tonight. So anyway, we went to bed and it was so comfortable. It was a big old feather mattress and it had a calico big thick calico sheet that wound from underneath right round and round a bolster and the pillows on top of that and we got into bed and I said to my husband oh isn't it comfortable and he said yes and it, just as though it was a flash we woke up and we said oh what a lovely night that was you know no noise no nothing but prior to going to sleep we could hear traffic running somewhere but where we didn't know but 
it never bothered us. We just slept and woke up very refreshed. And what um, sort of lighting was the? Well, now people have asked me that, and I cannot put my finger on the lighting. And why I did think it was electric? Mm. Because I don't remember candles, but mm. there was light, plenty of light. Mm. And why did Pauline say she was going to put her chair under the door? Because the latch was like the old barn latches, and with a wedge in it to hold it shut. Mm. And she was going to wedge hers up underneath. So she said, I think she was joking, you know. But um, it was just an amusing experience. We never thought any more about it. And then the next morning we went down to breakfast and the, the old man was down there mopping the floor up. And I was, my husband said to me, look, his flies are undone, Synth. And I said, oh, don't be daft, you know. And when I looked, they were. And they, he had thick grey trousers on, flannel trousers, with these metal buttons, uh, a white thick shirt with stripes up it and a granddad collar which was undone and he was mopping the old floor away there and he said it was too early so in english or in no in french he made us understand that it was mm. too early for breakfast so do any of you speak french no mm -hmm. <laughs> then my husband and his friend took the cases out to the car and packed the car up pauline was looking out of her room and i was looking out of mine um len said stay there Cindy. i'll take your photo so he took a photograph of us of me and Jeff took one of Pauline on his camera. And then I went round into Pauline's room and Len took one of the both of us together. And they were the last films on that spool, um, apart from one that my husband took at the border of the big pyramid-shaped thing with the steps going up the middle. And uh, we knew just where they came in that film. And uh, anyway, we had our breakfast and my husband went to pay the bill and gave, he said it was 19 francs. My husband said, it can't be. We slept and we had a meal and we've had breakfast and the gendarme said, uh, fini, fini. So he said, oh, well. That's well, English money at the time, 19 francs. Well, <laughs> we gave him a 20 franc piece of modern money. Yeah, well, what was the what would that equivalent be? Nineteen francs in English money then. About one pound um, fifty, wouldn't it? It was somewhere around about two pound, I about think. Two yeah. So it's an awful, yeah. awfully cheap yes, for right. all of you. Yes. So when um, you gave them the modern money, did they look quizzically? No, no. He simply took it, and we said, "Come on, let's get going while the going's good." You know, <laughs> in case you suddenly. Presumably, these gendarmes have passed your car outside. Well, it. Yes, yes, because it was loaded. Um, they were they'd loaded it outside and we they didn't were, they didn't say anything odd about it because if, if if they were no, from no, the past they, they would never seen a car my husband presumably. asked them while we were there if they could show us the route the auto route mm. to uh, on to france and to spain and they looked at us as though we were mad and they were going auto route auto route so we said yes uh, motorway motorway, yeah. motorway. Yeah. motorway. My husband said, Avignon. Ah, oh, Avignon. He said, yes, and indicated to go straight down the road. Anyway, we turned to come back the way we went into the village and back onto the motorway. Did and you pass any uh, other traffic? No. So anyway, so you left the hotel and carried on your holiday. Yes, we had a lovely holiday. Came back, it was pouring with rain, so Pauline said, oh, don't let's go on, let's stop somewhere. So my husband said, well, that hotel that we stopped at on the way down it must be around here somewhere. And you can't get anywhere cheaper than that, so we'll look for it. Um, anyway, we saw the motel sign, pulled off and went down, and uh, it was getting quite dark by then, and Jeff said, hang on, he said, we must have passed it. So we turned round and went back down. We went up and down the road four times and we couldn't find it. In the meantime, what struck us was the fact that the trees, which were about four or five foot high fortnight previous, was now about 40 foot high. Are you sure you were on the same road? Absolutely sure. We couldn't miss it because of the motel sign above the road. Mm. And pulled down, and it was the same roundabout. Well, we, we couldn't find anywhere, so we went on and stayed at Lyon, which cost us about 200 francs for the night. And I bet it wasn't as nice a hotel. No, no. <laughs> And we went back home, and about a fortnight later, I went out to our local club, and Pauline and Jeff are out there. And we were talking about the holiday, and Pauline said, Synth, she said, um, 
have you had your photographs developed yet? And I said, yes, why? She said, uh, well, so have we. But she says, do you know, I can't find that one that we had taken at the hotel. She said, and yet I don't seem to have any missing. Jeff took 12, a roll of 12. He said, and there's 12 films there, but none of the hotel. I said, I'll have a look as soon as I get home and ring you back. So when I rang her back, I said, no, you're right. The two that Len took of us prior to the border one are not there. There's all pictures of various stages of us enjoying ourselves on the way down, but nothing of the hotel. Was the film blank or was it just no, no exposure? No, it just as though it hadn't been taken. There were films there. There was, We had a roll of 24. There was 24 prints and 24 snaps. <laughs> So but none of that two. hotel. So how did Jeff and Pauline take it? Were, were they were they as comfortable as you obviously Jeff are with it? Jeff is, yes. He's quite happy with it, the same as we are. He'll talk about it and laugh about it. And, but Pauline is terrified about it. Really? Yes, she is. She, she won't talk about it unless really pushed into it. And she'd rather not know about it at all. In fact, she wouldn't come here today because of it. Wow. So. Is it... Uh, uh, Anything to do with the fact that she wanted her door closed? With the, she, she was maybe no, something else no, happened. No, it's just the fact that we couldn't find it on the way back, and we know for certain that that was the right road because of the way it pulls off in the motel situation, mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that we went down there and we could not find it, and then the, that her photo never turned out and mine never turned out, and there's nothing missing, and she says there's something really weird about it, and I don't want to know. What do you <laughs> think actually happened to you? What's your view? Well, I don't know. Mm. Now, Tony, you travel through time, don't you, quite frequently? Uh, yes, in fact, um, I've got a, a machine here, which um, I use for the purpose, a time travel machine, and uh, I'm pretty sure that by use of this equipment, uh, we could, in fact, uh, verify uh, Cynthia's experience. Not right now during this programme? Not, not right now. Uh, well, mm -hmm. it's, it's something that could be done. In what um, way would you verify it? And how can you verify your verification? I mean, simply right. by mm -hmm. getting somebody who uh, doesn't know the details of either story uh, and who is adept at the use of this, uh, somebody who can use mm -hmm. it competently. Physically going back in time? Uh, no, this is, this is uh, by means of uh, mental time travel, so that one be can become aware of the details of the time and place that one wishes to visit. So what's the difference between actually mentally travelling back and just dreaming it up and inventing it? You know, oh, how can you well, actually... Can you get well, two people to go back to the same place and give the same story? Absolutely, that's what I'm on about. And um, how do they do that? Just by what, you put your hand on top of the box? No, no, that's just to demonstrate the energy the device produces. In, in fact, this box will send out energy into a room and as many as 50 people at a time, or even more, uh, can experience uh, another time and place. What kind of energy is it? Mm. It's a natural form of energy. It's, it resembles the energy that's produced in a thunderstorm. Electricity, so static electricity. So it's something a scalar like wave and, uh, generator? It's not particularly scalar. This, this one isn't miles, but the yeah. others are, and, and they could be even more effective than this, I, I guess. Right. Is it doing it now? It's not doing it now. It's not switched on. So but what symptoms do people describe when they're, when they're in contact with this thing? <laughs> symptoms. Sounds like an illness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to be in. And it in is an illness, with isn't it? It's, it's, it's a uh, marvelous it just thing. Just to be in the room. For instance, you know, if um, if we were to be doing it now, mm. anybody that's in this room could have a time travel experience. I mean, when I'm in the presence of thunderstorms, I get headaches, mm. and a, a lot of people I know I do because they respond to the yeah, uh, the, the, the electricity in the atmosphere. Mm. I mean, when people do this with you, what do they say they feel like? Oh, no, w we don't get that kind of thing because. What happens is that during the course of a thunderstorm, at the beginning of a thunderstorm, a lot of people do feel very headachy. Mm. And then as the thunderstorm proceeds and comes to its close, people start to feel very, very light and, mm. and, and, uh, and very, very, very... Is very yeah. that yeah. to do with the ion exchange mm. in the atmosphere? Not really. It, that's part of the story. But and the how it affects your mental processes? You're just mm. dosing oh, yourself with negative ions? No, the main effect is the electromagnetic effect. Mm. The ions do play a part, but it's a different effect, two different effects. Well, I can see that it's plugged in. I mean, maybe we can turn it on now and see if any of us do travel through time during the course of the programme. Uh, is I it as simple as that? No, I doubt we will, because I have to give instructions on how to do it, and, and that's, that is would take up half the programme, I, I guess. You know, mm. we, we're not scheduled on this programme. So Although you have I'd to go through a process? A training, I'd certainly a like to do it... On a, on a TV show. Well, the fact that you already know the process, then, maybe you can 
travel through time and tell us what happened when you come back. Is it possible for you to go to the location that Cynthia was at, maybe tell us something that she hasn't mentioned? Not right, not, not right now, Jenny. One thing is I'm not a very good time traveller. I, I do do it occasionally, but some of the people... Usually I find that it's much easier to get other people to do it. I think it would be a terrible shame that the fact that we are fortunate enough to have a time travel machine on the table, it would be a terrible shame to not try and use it. Mm. Well, just switch it on. Do you want to switch it on? Switch it on and then have forget it and <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> well, it will see interfere. If anybody does have an experience. It mm. will interfere with the microphones, unfortunately. Right. So well, should we, we give it a try and somebody can can mm. tell me in my ear if the microphones are being interfered with? Yeah. yeah mm. sure. Now, what I'd like to do is to demonstrate the energy, demonstrate the fact that this equipment is sending out energy into the room. So if um, I switch it on, if, if Cynthia would like to yes. cooperate with this, what, I, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch Cynthia's face uh, uh, and see whether she feels that energy has come from the machine. Well, just be careful because my husband's watching. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'll switch it on now. And Cynthia, if you put your left hand about there, just yeah. above the machine, and let me touch your face. And now, now, do you feel, feel yeah. that there's something unusual happening, yeah. that, uh, that, that there's energy coming to you from the machine and, and that I'm, by touching it, by yeah. touching you... I can feel it. You can feel it, yeah. yeah. Does it what does like it feel like? Millions of little pins and needles. Yeah. Like a static Ooh. discharge. It's a static yeah. discharge, mm. just like mm. you'd get from a Van de Graaff yeah. generator. Or like sometimes no, when a you Van de Graaff generator is, 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 is a unique frequency. This is multi-frequency. This is a whole range of static frequencies. It's static anyway. So you can do well, the, the same scale thing when you put your hand against the television. Ago, so I had, uh, you have to turn it off. Facial and it attracts the fine hairs on your hand mm. towards yeah. it. That's yeah. the same, mm. the same so years ago, I had a facial problem, and they used to... <coughs> do the muscles with a, a wand and that mm. had the same effect all mm. prickly and but how does yeah. this so translate to, to, to time mm. travel i mean sure you can make people feel a static charge but yeah, what yeah. how do you take the next step from that to making them travel in time well the, the next the, the main step in order to achieve um, awareness of other times and places using this equipment is to have the people very very relaxed and um, the effect of the energy from this machine is to relax the body tremendously and, uh, uh, and to uh, cause the mind to become more active. So the uh, stimulus to the mind uh, mm -hmm. gives the person the ability to have dual consciousness, in other words, to be aware of the here and now mm -hmm. and s simultaneously to be aware of another time and place. But so I mean, do, do you actually tell them to go back to a specific date where you can verify events that happened on that date and check what they say they imagine or perceive was happening there. That, that can be done, yes. That can mm. be and have you done experiments like that? Yes. Mm. And, and what are the results? The results have been confirmatory. Mm -hmm. Well, Mars, didn't you yes, know I mean, somebody I, I who... I have a colleague who has, who has one of these, and that she was using it while she was driving her camper van, which I don't know whether it's a good thing to do or not, just plugged in, and she was uh, just had it on while she was driving. And whilst this was happening, uh, she suddenly realised that she was wearing different clothes, she was wearing a toga, she'd completely gone back to a past life. And of course, once she realised she was dressed in a totally different garment, she practically had a, a slight accident. But it does seem to have an effect where she, and as far as this particular lady is concerned, naturally drifted pa uh, back to her previous lives. Uh, which is a different thing to time travel. Which yes, is, so. in some sense, it's time travel. Mm -hmm. yeah. But mm -hmm. she re she regressed. If two people in her can life. regress to the same point. Then it's obviously not a past life. Yeah, that's the, that's the key. I mean, mm -hmm. somebody well, claiming that they've had a past yes, life. I mean, yes. is there any well, independent she verification actually that it, saw this was a real life or just her from imagination? From her point of view, what she was wearing totally changed. Yes. She was then suddenly, mm -hmm. she was. But I mean, you can daydream, and the same thing yeah. can happen. No. As I mentioned in the introduction, time travel is the most paradoxical of all the great enigmas. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I was wondering, Andrew, if, if, because obviously, um, as we all learn from watching the Back to the Future trilogy, there's a lot of logical ramifications going mm, on here. Absolutely. But can you solve them? Um, I have a sneaking suspicion that if time travel was ever solved, then the space-time continuum would find a way of sorting itself out. How? <sighs> Good question. I, I, the most popular theory at the moment is the many worlds theory, the theory that every possible at every possible instant in time uh, a decision is made and 
the number of universes splits at that point. There are millions and millions of parallel universes. I mean, that's Stephen Hawking's theory. That's not just the ramblings yes. of a mad Doctor Who fan. This is the, this is the, the trouble that most people are all too prepared to theorise, but basically it doesn't really matter. A fact is a fact. If it exists, there it stands. It doesn't need justification. But uh, time travel is a bit different. You do need some kind of justification with that. And I'm not trying to be a, a naysayer here, but um, you know, if you go back in time, you can alter reality and yes, all manner of. But of course, this appalling. is where we get into the paradoxes, mm. uh, the inevitable. The shooting one that, your grandmother. Yeah, the 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 inevitable question comes up: What does happen? If you do go back and shoot your father before he yeah. and your mother get together, then you've disappeared anyway and you can't have gone back and shot him. Well, we've already got or an have anomaly you. in Cynthia's yeah. case and because so they handed over, if mm. they did travel in yeah. time, a coin but that was... was it a coin? That's it. We do it have... It was a coin. It was a coin yeah. that yeah. says so Cynthia's years ahead of time. Have you ever gone back and looked for that coin? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, as it was out of their time and space, it should be left where you left floor. it. You would have yeah. imagined yeah. that some yeah. French mm. coin collector in, say, 1920 would have come across this coin all over with room. a date 50, yeah. 60 years in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think it would have come to light by now. Yeah. Mm. Surely the primary error is to assume that time is linear and doesn't change, mm. just like the primary error was that we had a flat Earth, mm. because we now know the Earth is, is a sphere. Mm. And likewise, gravity changes, light, speed of light changes, so it's, time can change. Mm. So if time well, changes time is a variable anyway, we've yes. already yeah. proved that. So if we've got uh, time currents, different time flow, mm. rates of different flow, we can I have... Don't, but what causes the time? Well, I don't think... In other words, maybe there's we, another world where that yeah, coin does exist, but in natural. our world it doesn't. It's, it's a perfectly yeah. natural thing If Bob goes back and shoots his father, there is a universe where he still exists because he didn't shoot his father, mm. and one mm. where he did. Because he existed to start with. Because if you have something existing but in the let's future, try that can generate the past. Through and presumably from one where some French peasant walking down the road saw your car and is now the inventor of the automobile. <laughs> 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 Could be. <laughs> Henry well, maybe, maybe he went to Germany and became but Gottlieb if, if, but Daimler. The assumption uh. is that an event in the present immediately does not have an effect uh, to an event in the past. That's our perception. Mm. That doesn't necessarily mean that if you create an event now, it backwardly traces in time to change history or prehistory yeah. in the past. Well, I had an extraordinary case. So that if you, if you go back I in time, it, it'll, it'll, it's, it's a, it'll feed back and loop anyway. There was an extraordinary case that I investigated where there was this girl and she um, had a dream in which she saw herself receiving a phone call while she was eating some banana sandwiches uh, from her boyfriend's best friend. And he said on the phone that your boyfriend's been in a serious motor accident um, and the first thing she did then was to burst out laughing which she found bizarre when she woke up from this dream because she knew that obviously she'd be horrified if that had really happened. Why did she laugh? Anyway, she told her boyfriend, he told his friend. A uh, few hours later, she's making banana sandwiches, the phone rings, his friend is on the phone saying exactly what she heard in the dream and she bursts out laughing because she said she thought they were pulling a joke on her based on the dream that she just told everybody so about. In fact, they sense. weren't. It was a reality. He had had the accident. Was and it okay? looks like he was fine, it, as, it, as it turned out. But it's like time went in a loop there. Mm. She yeah. had a yeah. dream which foresaw an event which only happened because of the dream that she'd had. Yes. Which yeah. is bizarre There's because thing, physics can cannot explain how time can work like that. Mm -hmm. Information, entropy, perception itself is a key to changing space-time. So it's, uh, we are changing space-time continually by looking at things, thinking, doing whatever we want to do, and then we act on that. So intelligence, life itself, intelligent life itself, is an essential, essentially proof that time travel exists because it's the creation mm -hmm. of perceptive it perceiving doesn't follow, organisms. It doesn't follow at all. Yeah. It's absolutely it because got nothing whatever to do with it. Once intelligent you life exists. There's no guarantee that that means that time travel exists. There could be universes elsewhere yeah. where life doesn't exist, yeah. but time yeah. still goes on and yes. looping around. Well, time time is, only, let's, uh, let's is only start a linear the, concept. Let's start from the physics rather than the metaphysics. Well, let's, if, let's, if, you're let's going to, if you're going to create start, a time machine... No, no, let's start with what we know is here. Yeah, OK, well, as a baseline. Um, yeah. the, the, all the concepts have been covered in fiction, in science fiction anyway. And uh, then came Einstein and he put, a, he put a mathematical or a physics 
explanation or at least claim on it. His donut shape of the universe. Um, whatever. Kind of thing. He said that if you travel faster, time travels slower. But that's staying now, within three-dimensional space. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's follow it through. Okay. Let's yeah. not jump the gun. If you have two clocks that are absolutely accurate, you know, the cesium clock, whatever, and one of them stays relatively still, and the other one you put in, in the shuttle and send it in orbit, into orbit, and it travels fast in orbit for a long, long time, and then you bring that same clock back and put it next to the original, or next to I mean, the other original. This has been done, one. hasn't it? Yes, it yeah, has. That's, this right. is my point exactly. Yeah. You can tell the difference in the, the tall building. The clock that has done the travelling is behind the clock that stayed still. Purely because it's been in motion. Purely because it's been in motion. But the thing is, that clock kept the same time as far as it's concerned. As far as it's concerned. Therefore, it has moved that distance into its future. Hmm. And if you had been with it, as some of the astronauts were, they have moved into their future. They are a few seconds younger than they would otherwise have been had they stayed on Earth. But you see, people yeah. often say that because yeah. when you travel faster and faster and get near the speed of light, time slows down like yeah. that, what happens at the speed of light? Yes. Einstein and Co. To didn't get say at the speed of light, you have to have an infinite mass. Yeah. Yes, but something does let's, travel at the speed of light. Not, light does. Let's in not fact, go, which has no but mass. you're only being yes. relative. You're what, what, at the speed of light relative to where you started. But you no, that's the whole point. The speed of light is constant whether, you re whether you're on a train, whether you're static or whatever. Yeah. Put yourself in the frame of reference of any kind of electromagnetic radiation like light that travels at the speed of light presumably it is timeless because yeah. mm -hmm. so in other words if we could ever establish that the basis of the universe is energy that means that the universe well, I think is, Einstein is timeless. Did that pretty well with the so equals therefore, MC that square. proves that time is a construction that we're <coughs> imposing in three-dimensional space because at that level of reality where everything is energy there is no time because Energy travels yes, at the speed time of light. Is a, is a construction that we have invented. It's not an actual rea real quantity. No, no, it is no, good. no. It's it not is a quantity. It's created. variable, it but it's real. It's a me, it's it me. is a dimension. Mm. We are travelling through time ourselves. Just one second per yes, second. Yes, a dimension a second of. Second. Hmm. We've we just know defined that we can it. Vary that by the clock. Remember, mm. the only thing we haven't done yet is learn how to reverse that travel. Mm. Mm. Now, if we can go forward and then come back again, or go back and then come forward, then it would have uses and they would, there would also be abuses. <laughs> the fact that so far we don't know of any... Well, if a time traveller walked in here right now, would you know he's a time traveller? That's, that's, no, you that's would. a problem. Depends but what he's wearing. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Definitely, yes. Yeah. But by, by, by means of this, this machine, one can h help to verify such things. And mm -hmm. some of the people who have uh, used this method have uh, gone back or forward in time and reported that they have witnessed uh, people who were able to do uh, physical time travel and, and they've accompanied them and seen it happen. So that How do they accompany them? How do they s see them? Well, mm. uh, or did they? Uh, did the time travellers see see them? Your people, uh, both, but both both those things happen. And did they find it as easy to go into the future or the past? It seems to be no 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 great problem either. So way. even though your person is physically sitting in a room with this box, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they've gone away mentally, yeah, yeah, and they've time travelled and they've met another time traveller. That other time traveller can see them, yeah, yeah. So what do they see? Do well, they see them out of body? Or? Usually what happens, th there are various ways in which they can see them. They can either be seen as, a, a, as a, a ball of light or they can actually enter into the consciousness of a person of that time. So that uh, as a person of that time, they can accompany uh, somebody who's a time traveller. So you're saying a, sort of a ball of light. So I mean, there's lots of instances where people are seeing these balls of light travelling around. Well, well, look, there's a, there's a, a simple, light simple light answer then to your problem with the machine. All you have to do is go home and next week, mm. all the preparations you need, make sure that you arrange for someone to travel back to this moment now during our programme and we should see them. Exactly. Get the cameras ready. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, well, can you preferably do that? get them to bring uh, a blueprint of their time machine uh, with them so that we can make one ourselves. I think Jerry's so had a very good idea. Do you promise you'll do that yeah. next no, week? No, what would happen? 
would be that possibly... No, what would happen would be that somebody would come in here no, no, and put no. the papers down. No, what if would happen? They what could. That's physical no. time travel. No, You're what talking would happen? about etheric time travel. What would happen, uh, Bob, would be that somebody would occupy the consciousness of one of the people in this room. If yeah, I have an early thought. Try, okay. try <laughs> and then hopefully, uh, before this programme finishes, something is going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. least, so do you promise, Tony, that you'll try? You owe it, it to, to, but to it science. But it won't work unless you do it. Yeah. And also see, to our curiosity. I, I, I wouldn't, uh, there you are. Yes, I, I wouldn't say. No, no. I wouldn't say that it would produce anything that we would see in in the course of the program. Well, give it a try. No. Anyway. Do you promise that we will let you know? Yeah. But if you do try, at least something might. Yeah, yeah. So, will you try it? Yes or no? Oh yeah. Sure. Thank you. Right. Definitely. Okay. That is a, would be a time marker. That's a exactly. way. Of, that's a way yeah. of going through time and leaving markers. Yeah. Uh, but how much just is going to leave the the French coins. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's a brilliant time. But hang on, if the person's just occupying our consciousness, how will we know if they've actually travelled back to the studio? If I start drawing a time machine on the back of my cigarette packet, you'll know. Or next week's lottery or numbers. Or next, next week's, week's lottery, lottery numbers, yes. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. You, you won't tell anybody what next week's lottery numbers well, by the time are. The if I got them, them I wouldn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm that's what happened. If I then come back after I'd won and tell you, all of you. If you remember, there was an occasion about yoga when about 100 150 people won the lottery won jackpot. Maybe that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Or they picked, it was a, a very obvious sequence of numbers. Well, there's some evidence one. suggesting that it's one or the, other. the lottery is, that the randomness of the lottery is slightly pushed by a lot of people wanting particular numbers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, Bob, uh, what, I, what I'd like to suggest is that you do write something on the back of your cigarette packet. If I get the feeling I, I want to, I will, don't <laughs> worry. Don't, don't show it to anybody. Hold it, up, hold it like that with the writing down. <laughs> OK, and I'll see if I can get somebody to read it. Next week. No. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, write yeah, something yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Write, something, okay. write something else. Well, don't let anybody in the you can get one of it. us lot to read it now. No, keep it to yourself. Or keep it, keep it quiet. Yeah, okay. keep it to yourself. Or maybe uh, you could read it as a confirmatory thing, as long as you don't let other people know what it is. But that means yeah, nobody could travel into my... I won't. Well, uh, all you have to do is arrange for this person who's going to occupy the consciousness to occupy mine and give me the numbers before the next draw, please. I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you want to now, me. You see, <laughs> I want them. <laughs> there's a problem with finding the lottery numbers in advance, which is that the people who arrange the lottery know very well that there are masses of clairvoyants and psychics and time travellers and mediums and so on who, who, who are going to be looking, looking out for it. So I, I think they take steps to protect it from psychic uh, Do you think they're seriously so aware that, that they would even bother doing that? Mm. Oh, mm. loads of people are trying. And how, sure and how, trying do, you how many people are winning week after week after week? Mm. Mm -hmm. How do you protect so, against... So who mm. needs so to win it week after the, week after week? Bob has written do. something down on his packet of senior service. Right. What happens now? Well, I'll try and get somebody to read it in the future. And, and then... And then... I'll contact, contact you about it. Uh -huh. And so you can check up with, with Bob as to right. whether it's you the, all the right thing. Can't you get somebody you to... You all have my word. I will not show it to anyone or tell anyone. Have you so you're saying that somebody... That in the future... I will keep this packet. So in, so in a week's time, you're going to get somebody to come behind the couch, read what Bob wrote, and tell you. Behind the I can't sofa. promise it'll be a week, but very soon, as soon as I can manage it. Mm. What you should have oh, done is well, sent somebody last week to see this programme now, and you'd know we were going to do this, and you'd have been ready. <laughs> get so involved. <laughs> Tony, sorry, can't you get somebody to travel in time from next week to now, and then to, to, um, to get into our bodies, what was the word, to, to occupy our bodies, um, and tell us what the thing written down says. Mm. Uh, you probably wouldn't be aware they, w they were there. Mm. But if they were there mm -hmm. and they could influence what he did or what he said, then mm. he could then tell you mm. what was on the... Or he could tell all of us but what was on the packet. But Tony, and then if I produced it and it was, yeah, yeah, sure. are you aware your proof? of mm. anybody here now? Would you be aware of that? Not, not, no. not at the mm. moment, no. So mm. would you be able to see it if it happened? Probably, probably not. And I what, don't know. It and what would you see if, if right. you saw somebody coming mm. in from a, consciously speaking? How would you see that? Or how would you detect it? <laughs> well, there would be all sorts of different possibilities here. I mean, one might see sort of a ghostly figure, or one might see, uh, say, a little globe of light flitting about or something like that. <laughs> Is, 
as well as being a, a researcher in this area, you've actually had experiences of time travel yourself, haven't you, or, or certainly precognition? Yes. Um, I had a dream of which I saw a paper factory by a bridge that was on fire. And 24 hours later, I was taking part in a charity-sponsored walk and walking through the middle of Preston, uh, a group of us saw a paper factory apparently on fire by a bridge. I had forgotten the dream. I had written it down, but totally forgotten about it consciously. We went round the little stream and we looked at the fire and then we realised and giggled our mistake that what we were actually looking at was the night shift on a factory and the furnaces reflecting off low clouds. So we mm. forgot about it and walked on. But I had this nagging feeling, hey, there's something here about this. So as soon as I got back, I could check my notes and there I had written it down. Mm. That this was, so I proved to myself it wasn't just a recollection or a memory. I had written it in advance, this incident. Now, of course you can say it's coincidence, but when you go through an experience like that and you see this sort of sequence of very unlikely events, like a paper factory, a bridge and a fire, all matching exactly what happens less than 24 hours later, it takes a lot of persuasion to you that this is just simply coincidence. And note also that what I actually saw was my own state of consciousness, if you like, from the future. The mistake that I made. It was your interpretation Exactly. Of if I'd what? actually seen the future, I would have had a dream of a, of a night shift on a factory reflecting mm. off low clouds, and I didn't. Yeah. And this has often happened in cases where I've investigated where people have had similar apparent experiences of seeing the future, very often they make that same kind of mistake. If, mm. for instance, their first contact with information is through reading a story in the newspaper and that newspaper journalist makes a mistake, their dream ahead of time makes can the same mistake. Can perpetuate mm. that mistake, yeah. No, do you have to be blessed like Cynthia to travel through time or are we all travelling through time all the time without realising it? Well, I think, I think <laughs> no. <laughs> I just accept that it has happened. And well, your friend doesn't. There's no answer to it. And mm. It's something that we've had a lot of fun and enjoyment out of over the years mm. because of the way mm. it happened. And you weren't particularly interested in the paranormal and no, such No, I'm like... not interested in the paranormal at all. Mm, so it just happened to out of the blue. But, but were, you, were you blessed? Was, was Cynthia blessed with this? Well, I, no, I, I think, think she's had an experience. I think Ockham's razor cuts both ways. Mm. I see no possible advantage to the lady or her wife or uh, or her husband rather except that uh, we had a night's lodging well which, yes which that's was what true. we wanted but but i see no reason why anyone should it attempt to invent this story so no, i no. i can well believe that the perception you had you actually went through that experience mm. what well, the explanation believe, what the explanation travel through time you're no. a big time travel fan, but why are you being? I'm, why are you being? I, I um, would rather a sourpuss about Cynthia's I'm, story. No, I'm not. Mm. I'm saying I would far rather believe it and not have an explanation for it mm. than turn round and try and invent an explanation or disbelieve it entirely. Mm. Well, you see, if uh, Cynthia's story was unique, then yeah, you, it could, isn't. you could, but, but it isn't. There are mm. other instances that didn't have the pleasant outcome that Cynthia's did. People have had unpleasant time travel experiences. Well, let us say that there's a, a very well-known couple of stories which could be explained by parallel universes but could also be explained by time travel or, or something that doesn't exist in our science at the moment. Mm -hmm. And what are the stories? Uh, 19, 1809, I'm sorry, in Pearlberg in, in Germany or Austria or somewhere, uh, there's a famous case where uh, a British diplomat walked around the horses and disappeared completely. And a very good... Behind a horse? He was <laughs> travelling from, um, I think, Vienna back home to England and uh, he was travelling with his, with his valet and his secretary in a coach, coaching four or whatever, and they stopped at, a, at an inn. We're back to a hotel again. <laughs> yeah. uh, he stopped at an inn yeah. and uh, they changed horses and he walked around the horses and he was observed to walk around the horses and he disappeared. Literally Nobody saw there, him yeah. from that day to this and he's never been seen since. Now, as I say, a very good science fiction writer has used it to create an alternate worlds scenario where he walked around the horses into another world, mm -hmm. slightly different from, from our history. Mm -hmm. 
we have said that we are, my husband asked the policeman the way to Avignon, and they didn't understand about the motorway or anything. Mm. When we said Avignon, they showed us down the road. Mm. We often say, we wonder what would have happened if we'd have gone where they sent us, down that road, would yeah. we have come back or would we have would stayed there? Would you have stayed there? in 1900s Avignon? But we turned Avignon. around and went back. Mm. back on to the top of the motorway. Yeah. Mm. You're probably lucky to, to, lucky to come back mm. to now. I think these time travel experiences also pose questions about uh, the question of free will and fate. Mm. Because yes. I mean, there was a, there's yeah. a case, and this is a true case, I and mean, it's been verified, so it's not made up in any way, um, of uh, 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 someone who had a dream in which they saw a particular British Rail, when there was a British Rail train crashing, and they saw where it was going to happen, they saw the number on the side of the engine, and they could warn British Rail that this was going to happen. And British Rail apparently took it sufficiently seriously that they actually quietly renumbered the locomotive. And, and the locomotive, even crashed. these new guys, still had to crash yeah, at the same yeah. place. They could not cheat the future by the, doing this. Th there have been a, a number of instances where people have been warned about future events. And a, a good example of this is the former United Nations Secretary Doug Hammarskjöld um, was warned, uh, I think, two, year, two years before it happened, that he was going to die in an air crash. And um, because he was the Secretary of the UN, he didn't see any feasible way that he could stop travelling about in aircraft. So he carried on flying. But a number of his, um, uh, the, the people who worked around him and with him, uh, decided that just to be on the safe side, they would always fly on a different flight. And so they uh, flew on different Confidence. aircraft, That's different cool. flights. Yes. And uh, so when the uh, accident happened and Doug Hammarskjöld died, uh, the people around him who, who normally would have accompanied him were saved. And they were saved by the warning. Mm -hmm. So in fact, uh, warnings in advance uh, can be helpful. But isn't it standard practice for sort of when you've got people in important positions like that for them not to travel together? The royal family do the same thing, don't mm. they? Oh, we do yeah. it in our company. Yeah. We're, we're not that but important. It would have been <laughs> ironic if, but, if but their in this aircraft case, had crashed instead of <laughs> Dag Amersholt. In, in this case, there was a specific warning. That How was the warning delivered? Uh, I've forgotten now, but I, I, I know that uh, a so number of warnings were put across to that's Dag Hammarskjöld. That's what would interest me. Uh, there's another, people were telling yeah, him not a, to fly. Mm -hmm. There's a story yeah. which hasn't been told of a very famous uh, radio personality who was told by several people that he was going to die on his 30th birthday. And obviously he was very upset about this. And, and when it got to his 30th birthday, he stayed home all day, stayed in bed, kept all the doors locked, and didn't die. So maybe he averted it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, the problem is, so when an be. event doesn't happen, yes. there's You've no precognition. No so you don't know whether it should only have, have yeah. proof well, of it. Well, unfortunately, yeah. death is a bit terminal. You mm. can't correct it. It's well, it doesn't matter what happens. Yeah. If, if you predict something's going to occur and it doesn't occur, then you've failed. And you're all asking the question, you know, what, where's the evidence? But the evidence is sitting right next to you, Bob. It's Cynthia. <laughs> That's the other case that other things has this this happened to Cynthia. I mean, I've heard of cases... She went and yeah. she came back again. To four of us. But she no, couldn't well, go yes, back sorry. again, yes. which is the whole yeah, point. All, right. all four of you went yeah. and came back. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad to say. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. a very Otherwise, we'd have no record whatsoever no. of any sort. Do you well, wish you'd taken that road to Avignon? No, <laughs> I don't. Uh, oh, I think no, I'd have done that. that. Mm -hmm. oh, you might, yeah. There, oh, there no. are a whole I, series I, I of cases of people who are driving in cars. quiet, peaceful, rural life, I mean... Yes, but that was in, say, 1905. Yeah. One, one look thing what you would have then have had to look forward to. Yes. The Nazi occupation yeah. in ten yeah. years' time. <laughs> well, for a program that celebrates time travel, there seems to be quite a lot of people who don't believe in it. You believe oh, in I time believe, travel? Oh, I believe that, that it, it, it is likely at some time to be possible. Mm. I'm mm -hmm. convinced that they can do it and they have the technology to do it. If they mm -hmm. can, they can. And you it believe, Andrew, quiet, don't you? I don't I'd believe love they to could. Believe. I, I believe in the future. Yes, who knows what can happen. A lot can happen in the next 10,000 years, whatever. Mm. Um, I'm, not, I'm certainly not convinced that it's happened now. I want to sit there and see the look on Raleigh's face when he comes in after his great voyage to see the Queen and she's smoking a fag and eating a bag of chips. <laughs> <laughs> I would really love to be able to go back yeah. and see, mm. um, to meet Leonardo da Vinci, to find out where he got his ideas and from. Because I think whether 
it he may be that a his... fellow called Leo Vincent who time travelled yeah, back well, to Yeah, well, there was an Italy awful lot of stuff that he did that was out of time. I and it was that damn woman with the enigmatic, sm enigmatic smile. That's well, why that's she was so smug. A whole series she, knew that that time she was the existed. time traveller that told him. I also yeah. reckon that the real reason the Titanic sunk is because all the time travellers from the future that go <laughs> to watch it sink weighed it down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's so much that time travel would be capable of, but I mean, right well, now, the know. power requirements are just so yeah. no. astronomical. No, that's just cool. think of no, the no, entertainment. No, 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 just think of the entertainment. Physical time though. travel we're talking no, about. No, no. Just no, think so. of the videos, the much subtler and much videos you could make mm -hmm. if you could travel in time. We're dealing with, with, with moving our all dimensions and five dimensional space. It's being done. It's, it's part of a whole new range of, of electronics. It's fundamental to zero point energy. It, it is the hyper dimensional technologies are being used and they do exist. Can you show me a paper on that? There's I mean, lots of them. Uh, that's, I, I'm not, that's people, not a cynical question. No, I would I mean, love mm. to see the our, that, that's fundamental. Our, the, our view of using electronics is stuck with the three dimensional world. But mathematics, if there's one thing that mathematics and engineering teaches you, is that all the equations are basically the same, no matter whether you're dealing with mechanical en engineering or electronic engineering, they all deal with multi-dimensional well, expressions. I, I, yeah. I believe yeah. that the so once you take the technology, once you learn how to, how to, how to walk, and then you run, then you exploit the technology at different levels, if you just push yeah, it a little bit further... This is where we are now, though. Yes. We are three-dimensional... Yeah. Well, you, call it four-dimensional four people. We have what gravity, we need we is have, a means yes. of getting beyond yes. into the fifth and sixth yes. and seventh. But once yeah. you've got control of gravity, and once you have gravity drive... Which we have can Yes, Which we, we have got, got that. Why aren't we, we going to the stars that. if we've got No, we have. We have gravity drive. No, we haven't. We have technology, but we have. Yes, we have. There's people up in North London have got it. There's gallons of information on this particular subject. There's just a big lot of information on it. So if you want to look up on the internet and some of the information on internet does concern methods that use huge amounts of energy mm. black holes mm. harnessing black holes and all that sort of rotating but cylinder say, mm. did but it just that say is not necessary we don't need yeah. really need that's yes. a concept something that we need that's that's energy. Energy. john Fair searle's not device creates a gravity drive mm. now it's not um, he, he he developed uh, oh God, a piece of technology drive. <laughs> which he originally created to, uh, uh, to, to, to create another form of, of, of electric motor mm. just to generate uh, electricity. But what he discovered was, this is going back about 30, 40 years, what he discovered was that the more energy he took from his generator, the colder it got. And essentially what he'd done was he'd, cr he'd stumbled on a completely new way of thinking about electronics and magnetism. And what he eventually did was that the more power he took, aw took away from his device, the colder it got, the more efficient it got, and it actually lifted off the ground. It actually opposed Earth's gravity and lifted off the ground. No, it uh, probably opposed Earth's magnetism. No, it was if gravity. It's an electric and we motor, have people who've, who've created anti-gravity by lifting balsa wood up, yeah. not magnetism. This is gravity drive. We've got people who are dealing with the five dimensions of space, time, and gravity. Once you're able to exploit and control all those different dimensions, time is the next one. Mm. And John Searle's work, when he put instruments inside his device, detected no visible form of movement. And secondly, it also had his own gravitational field inside. So you have a situation where you have essentially a little piece of space time floating around. Gravity is fine, but it still doesn't move it through time. But once you have control, once you can control those five dimensional vectors, then you can exploit. Gravity isn't, isn't a dimension. If you have five dimensional space. No, gravity is space, not a dimension. Time and gravity. Gravity is not a dimension. That. It does not make any difference what you do with gravity. If you exploit that with five dimensional space, that's space, time, and it gravity. It still you isn't get a dimension. To change the time. I don't want this to kick off. No, Bob, I should <laughs> it still yeah. isn't a dimension. We we have three dimensions. Well, I in let space you argue that out with people who at do at the moment enough. plus time that only goes I'm in one direction so though. far. What you do with gravity in that, mm. in those those three dimensions, is irrelevant to moving in time. I think we just have um, to accept that some people believe gravity to be a dimension and others not to. And 
I think the bottom and line, the anyway, key word has is to the word be belief. The, the, these, these experiences that people have, they either really happened or they didn't really happen. I believe they really happened because I've had them myself and yeah. I, I'm, I'm convinced by many yeah. of the people that I've spoken to. Consequently, yeah. the answer to that is that if these things really happened, science is wrong. Whatever we think no, we know mean. now no, just is incomplete. not wrong. Incomplete. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Science right. is incomplete. Well, it's I'll always I'll incomplete. Well I'll where this is and then come back again. I think we should just accept the fact that gravity is or isn't a dimension. No, it isn't a dimension. Well, I'm with Miles. <laughs> I think exploiting I think the quantity of gravity mm. and being able to control gravity may be able to lead you, you into a different set of dimensions, but gravity itself is not a dimension. Gravity it's is a dimension. Thing in the uh, existing uh, well, it's we've, a we've, we've run out of time, although, of course, maybe we can all go back and do this again sometime in the future. But I'll give Miles the last word. You've heard what everybody said. Is gravity a dimension? Gravity is a quantity, and in five-dimensional space, it is a dimension, as part of that five-dimensional space.